My next guest is the newest member of the UFC's light heavyweight division. He picked up a contract on Tuesday on Dana White's Contender Series, getting a win over Ty Flores. It is Dustin Jacoby back here on the program. Dustin, how's it going? Uh, it's going good, man. Uh, yeah, everything's good. Got back home yesterday, so I'm just getting settled back in and, and uh, trying to heal up a little bit. There's a lot to unpack from that fight. Let's first start with the fact that you fought in front of an, like without an audience. I mean, I'm sure that's something you're not used to. You fought in glory where the crowds are just insane. Now, how was that, you know, just being in the cage and hearing everything? Yeah, you know, as far as the fight goes, um, when we got to fighting, that it didn't matter because, you know, the punches are flying. You got other things you're worrying about. But I remember walking out, I had some headphones in and, and jamming music. So I was all in my own zone and my element. And then I took the headphones out and they're bassling me up. I'm talking to coach and I never experienced that before. And uh, it, it was almost too quiet. It was creepy quiet. But then, like I said, once we got in the fight, it got to, uh, you know, guns blazing. So it was all good. What was the game plan heading in? I mean, obviously you wanted to keep the fight standing, utilize your, you know, your kickboxing pedigree. But uh, what, what was the game plan? Yeah, the game plan was to, to use my range, you know, take the center. I think I did a great job of, um, you know, we worked a ton of takedown defense this camp, and I think it really showed in, in, in the fight. And, um, you know, just to use my range, use my kicks, use my punches, keep it at the end of everything. In my mind, I, I really wanted to finish. I finished it pretty quick and, um, you know, I hired up, pretty amped up all day and um, kind of had a little to uh, you know, just calm down a little bit more, take take my time, relax a little bit. But, you know, next time I think I'll be better as far as the cardio goes. I don't think it was a cardio issue. Anymore. What surprised you, if anything, about your opponent? I mean, his durability was something I'm sure a lot of people didn't expect him to hang in there for the three rounds. But how did you uh, look at him as an opponent in terms of any surprises? Yeah, you know, honestly, when, when I got into the cage, I really thought I was going to walk right through him. I thought I was going to be able to finish him pretty quick. Um, and then I'll tell you what, I saw him walking out and I was locking eyes with him. And when he got into the cage and we locked eyes and we locked eyes for a really long time, Something told me right then and there, I saw this look in his eye that he wasn't going anywhere, that he was going to be a grinder, that he was really going to be bringing it. And, uh, you know, but I was ready for that. You know, I, I was welcoming that. You know, I've been in there before with with uh, the same type of guy. So when I saw that look in his face, it kind of gave me a little bit more excitement. Like, all right, almost like it tested me even more, you know, to try to finish him. And, um, you know, that that's what I did when I came out and fought as hard as I did those first couple rounds, man. And when Herb didn't call the fight at the end of the second round, I was thinking to myself, I have to dig deep and, and really push through for this third round. I was going to ask you about that. Were you surprised he didn't stop the fight sooner? There were a few times in that fight where you thought, man, is, are they going to keep letting him take this damage? No, I mean, outside, when re-watching the fight, it did look like, you know, he was, I mean, he was hurt when he kind of sat down and buckled down. But when I was in there, you know, credit to Herb Dean, he's an awesome official. He's an awesome ref. When I was in there, when he started talking to him, he got over top. He's like, you, he's like, you, I got to see something. I'm going to call this fight. As soon as he said, I'm going to call this fight, Ty Floor is like a zombie, just like stood up. And I was like, okay, man, this kid, once again, this kid's not going anywhere. So kudos to him. I, I really enjoy fights like that, really that push you to your limit and uh, really get out max effort from both guys. Were you confident you had the contract, uh, even though it did go the distance? It was a great fight, but you never know, right, when it, when it comes to going to the judges' scorecards. Um, you know what? I was not confident about the contract, but what I was confident about is the decision win. I knew there was not going to be any uh, judge controversy there. I, if if I somehow lost that fight, then I, then I don't even know what to say with the, with the judges. But we've all seen bad calls before. But I knew in my head I was a, a thousand percent confident that I didn't lose. I just wasn't real sure if I was going to get the contract or not. But at the same time, it was a win win in my head because. I improved to 12 and 5. I, I, I fought a guy that was just was so durable and so tough. And, and I beat the brakes off him. You know, I, I really did. I put on a great performance. I fought hard. And I, I thought, you know what? If, if I don't get the contract tonight, I'm going to be getting a call soon. So I knew it was a win win. Um, of course, I was happy to get the contract that night. Uh, makes everything feel a little bit better going forward. But, um, you know, either way, I, 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 was, I was happy with my performance and, and happy with the fight. How did you celebrate after the win? I know a lot of stuff in Vegas is closed, but did you get to enjoy yourself at all? You know, we just went over to my manager's place. He had an Airbnb. We, we had a little grub, and I had a couple whiskeys, and, and I was really exhausted. You know, I, I was I, I put out max effort, so I think I was laying down in my bed by 1030, and of course, you know, I had 
uh, you know, over a couple hundred text messages. And then, of course, social media. I didn't even get to that until today, really. So uh, pretty overwhelmed with everything, watching some highlights. But, man, I, I was down hard. We didn't do too much celebrating. And, you know, I still haven't really. So I, I enjoyed a few cocktails last night with some friends. But, you know, nothing major. Just, just been kind of kind of casual I guess it's with the maturity I remember back in the day like you'd just be raging after a fight and celebrate a victory real hard and anymore it's more like a job and you fight so hard you're just happy that it's over and can relax did you talk to Dana at all after the fight I wasn't able to because I right after the fight I had to go get stitched up and I was back there for like 40 minutes so um I missed him completely I heard from afar that he had good things to say and you know said I fought 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 hard and and was an exciting fighter so you know, ultimately I think is what got me the contract. And, uh, in terms of, um, you know, you mentioned the stitches and stuff, uh, how are you feeling? Like, when are you looking to get back in there and start training again? I know this is fresh. You got to enjoy the victory tour a little bit, right? But, uh, when are you going to get back in there? Yeah, but I'm already thinking about getting back in there. You know, I, I have to heal up. My hands are, are both swollen. Uh, my elbows are pretty sore. My knees are sore. My right ankle swollen. Um, you know, just, just, from a hard fight from, from a guy that just took a, a lot of punishment and, and pushed me to the max and never quit. So, um, the cut, as far as that goes, probably, I think I got, uh, 45 to 60 day suspension. Uh, told me I can get the stitches out after like 10 days, let the swelling go down. It's crazy because Tuesday night I got stitched up. My eye wasn't swollen at all. It, it felt fine. And I, and as I was going to bed, as the night went on, I could feel it swelling just a little bit woke up Wednesday morning and it was completely shut. I was like, you got to be kidding me. Where did this come from? So it was like a delayed uh, reaction. But, um, you know, I, ideally I'd like to fight, uh, you know, end of September, beginning of October. Yeah, that, that'd be a good time frame, I'm thinking. So once, uh, you know, here in the next couple of weeks, once I can heal up, like all the bumps and bruises and, you know, get back to my cardio, get back to the strength training and, and do what I can on the mat, you know, do continue my jujitsu and um, do as much as I can without getting punched in the face on a daily basis. And is there any opponents that interest you at 205? Because, you know, it's a different, uh, you know, time around uh, with you fighting at light heavyweight instead of fighting at middleweight like you did the first UFC go around. Yeah, um, you know, nobody um, really pops out. Um, I think, like, down the road, one guy that I think would be extremely fun to compete with is Gogan Saki, being a, a you know, former kickboxer. Um, you know, relative, re, has, has a, a low MMA record, not many MMA fights, but an exciting fighter, no doubt about it, uh, a stand-up guy. So um, I think that would be one heck of a, a, a brawl and one heck of a war and, and an excellent display of uh, some striking skills. So um, I think we're both excellent strikers and, and would love to go in there and throw down until somebody goes down. So that one interests me, but um, at the same time, any any striker that, you know, I'd like to get comfortable in there. I'd like to get in there and um, just get comfortable, make it, make it feel like home. I am comfortable. I am ready, but obviously the more you can get in there and you can build a few wins and, um, you know, that, that always helps too. So, uh, we'll see, you know, I, I've never turned down a fight. I've always said yes. And, um, I know this time around, it might be a little bit different. We'll have more options, you know, the UFC in general, it's more of a, you know, they'll give you five guys, whoever you like, if that guy likes is agrees and you know, that's what it is. So, um, hopefully we got, you know, some more options than the first time I was in. The first time I was in the UFC, you fought whoever they gave you. No ifs, fans, or buts, no options. So I think it'll be more fun this go around. And you got your teammate fighting in a few weeks. He's going to be uh, in the main event against uh, Alexander Rakic, uh, Anthony Smith. Uh, how's he looking ahead of everything uh, as far as his big fight coming up? Oh, he's looking great, man. A Anthony, is uh, he's the man. He, he's, uh, he's big. He's strong. He's durable. He's experienced. He's... Uh, very skilled, very well-rounded, um, just an absolute beast on the ground. So it's fun to work with him, um, fun to get better training with him. And uh, looking forward to his fight, man. I told him after the fight, we were talking, and, you know, Anthony's one of those guys that I look up to a lot. You know, we came up together. Um, I, like I told you, I think it was an interview with you. I was talking about how, um, you know, I fought one of his teammates back in, like, 2011, 2010. And, you know, he, he was in a real rocky road in his career, and, um, you know, I remember him talking about maybe, you know, it just sucks and not wanting to go on. And I was at the completely different end of the spectrum. I was getting ready to get signed by the UFC. And, um, you know, and obviously now our roles are reversed. You know, I'm kind of breaking in and he's been a star. So um, I look up to him, man. We've, we've each had bumpy roads and, um, you know, I'll go to war with that guy any day of the week. And I appreciate his help and, and his, uh, you know, just his veteran status in the gym. 
Are you going to be able to help him much uh, leading into his fight, uh, even though I know you got some bumps and bruises, maybe even just from a strategy standpoint? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I'll be in there. I plan to, you know, we got Cody Brundage, another kid that. Yes, and who I just saw is going to be a dad. I saw that the other day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So huge, huge congrats to Cody and, and his uh, wife, Bobby. So uh, super excited for them. And, um, you know, I really like Cody. I want to be in there helping him as much as I can, obviously uh, being a little bit banged up and his fight's right around the corner. Um, I might not get to do that. But we put in a lot of work prior to my fight. He helped me incre- uh, immensely in my takedown defense. And, uh, you know, I want to repay the favor and I want to see him do well. Awesome. Uh, last question before I let you go. You mentioned you got a lot of messages. Uh, what was the feedback like from the kickboxing community? You know, I don't know if they reached out to you and were like, hey, man, congratulations, because I know you were pretty popular when you fought for glory. Yeah, um, you know, I, I saw a few of the guys had reached out to me and, and uh, via social media and text message and everybody had great things to say, man. Super proud of me and, um, you know, showed that my rocky road and my experience really, really prevailed and really showed in the fight. And, uh, you know, I had... Uh, um, you know, I'm always my hardest critic, you know, after a fight. So it's always good to watch a fight. And I still haven't completely watched the fight. I need to do that here uh, today sometime. But um, I did see some highlights that I was happy with. And just hearing the feedback from everybody, it sounds like, um, you know, everybody was pleased and I put on a pretty good show. So that's always great to hear that feedback. And um, of course, would like to finish. But man, hats off again to Ty Flores. What, what a gamer and uh, really respect that kid. Congratulations again on getting the contract, Dustin. Uh, awesome fight, like I said. Uh, just remind people where they can find you on social media and if you've got any sponsors or shout-outs. The floor is yours. Yeah, man. Uh, you can find me at uh, the Hanyak DJ, H-A-N-Y-A-K, on pretty much all social media platforms. Um, huge, huge shout-out to my team, my coach at Factory X, Mark Montoya, um, my, my strength and conditioning team at Landau Performance. Those guys are a huge part of – uh, my success and you can see the speed inside the octagon too it comes from them um my my agency at iridium sports agency those guys take such good care of me and um you know i have i have tons of sponsors that i need to get out on the, on the gram and and be thank them as well because uh there was just so many and i still haven't gone through that bag yet either so um you know just thank very thankful for them and and everything they provide me with and, and i'll get up to all the sponsors here in the coming days but I appreciate the platform, James, and look forward to getting back on your show. 